What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my next gen career mode. This is episode number 23 and uh, we start today's episode off with a game against Alborg here away in Denmark in a Champions League qualifier. Now of course because we finished fourth last year we don't go into the group stages automatically. We have to win a qualifier but I was actually very pleased to get drawn against Alborg because no disrespect but I felt very confident coming into this game. You know I really did. I felt as though we would be the favourites and uh, I felt as though we should be able to get the win so I did rest quite a few players. A few first team members stayed out there, obviously, but I did rest quite a few players. But to be honest, I looked at that team. I was like, there aren't really that many players I know in that squad. You know what I mean? Obviously, um, Verts or Wurtz, if you want the uh, the long term. Uh, 30 year old or 31 year old midfielder I know him obviously but um, there's not that many uh, players I know but it was actually Alborg who had the first chance of the game, uh, they had a shot there but Ter Stegen made a great save to keep the score at 0-0 so good stop by our early goalkeeper but to be honest that was pretty much the only chance Alborg would have pretty much for a very long time at least you know and as guy takes a strike here in the 27th minute it goes just wide in the post and it was all us for the first half other than the early chance it was all us in the 42nd minute you see Vandenberg get the ball to Hossegai he dribbles past his man but the shot was tame and the goalkeeper made the save it really was us attacking and Alborg uh, struggling to defend and just before half time here it was still nil nil I wasn't really nervous I just knew eventually we'd get the goal and as Serge Gnabry sprints down the right hand side there we got men in the centre we fizz in a shot it's saved by the goalkeeper but it falls to to Ramos and Ramos in probably his last game for the clubs. He looks set to join Bayer Leverkusen for £10 million. Scores the goal that makes it 1 0. So he breaks the deadlock just before half time. And uh, if that is going to be his last goal for the club, then uh, at least he'll know it'll be quite a meaningful one. So that'll be nice. But uh, Ramos makes it 1 0. In the second half, I just dictated the tempo. I just passed the ball around. I didn't really feel the need to sort of go all out attacking and just look for that second goal because even just a 1 0 win here will be enough for us. And as you see, the uh, ball get played out wide here. Vandenberg crosses the ball in. And the far post, just shield wins the header, puts it past the goalkeeper, makes it 2 0. So that goal would surely see our progress into the Champions League, uh, Champions League group stages now. Because at the end of the day, you know they they were so bad in front of their home fans. I really don't see them causing much of us uh, much of us trouble for us away from home, uh, our home ground. And uh, we almost uh, wrapped off the game nicely here at Baum Johan in injury time. The ball went just wide of the post. But yeah, the game did finish 2 0. It was a really really routine victory, other than the early chance they had there. I kind of spoiled it for you. Sorry about that. But early, other than the only chance they had, they, they did nothing. They absolutely did nothing. That was the only shot Ter Stegen had to deal with. And we won the game by two goals to nil. So... You have to say now, you know, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. You know, I am still going to touch wood, uh, being superstitious. And, um, well, I'm not superstitious at all. You know, I just do it for the laugh. But um, even so, uh, I really do believe that uh, we should be into the uh, to the Champions League group stages. But uh, even so, you never know when a, uh, a small club can uh, cause you a, a big uh, big shock. You would have seen there, Real Madrid were, uh, were held by St. Pat's. So how about that? But uh, anyway, um, we uh, after that, we uh, decided to um, go ahead and put a new bid for uh, Maran Fellaini. Because I said before, like, I wouldn't mind signing Fellaini because if we do sell Ramos I'll be switching to a, uh, a formation that only plays with one striker up front which to be honest is better for me anyway because I play much better when I'm, when I'm only just using one striker and uh, Ramos has indeed gone to buy Leverkusen anyway so that would prove to be his last game he has scored his last goal for us he's gone for 10 million pounds and you know I'm sure some people may sit there and think you know that's terrible like that's generally terrible why would you do that kind of thing but to me honestly like I just I really feel as though you know I didn't really get on with Ramos that often and I really do feel as though we need to improve the other areas in the squad because Yashil is a great striker despite his rating. He, uh, he feels like a 75 rated striker. Elsie Lasogra is an absolute monster. I only, play, I only want to play with one up top anyway and I feel like now we can possibly look at signing a couple new good players because we've actually got the money now. We've actually you know now we've got the money. I've I've been a cheapskate and rightfully so but now we've got the money. 13 million pounds, 100 grand on the wage budget. We finally got the money to sign some new players so I know I know, I know. It must have been frustrating over the past few episodes to see, um, you know, me basically putting in these really low bids. But uh, it's because we didn't have the money. Now we've got it. Now we sold Ramos and got the money. Now we can start to sign some new good players. But uh, we put in a new bid for uh, Hesse Rodriguez as well, and also for Voland. I really, really want this guy because he can, of course, play out wide and up front. He could be a really good option for us if we. Uh, my preferred formation to play would be a four-two-three-one. He will be a really good, uh, good player for us, possibly in that left attacking mid, right attacking mid slot. But so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, big comes in for uh, Mukhtar here and uh, 1860 Munich. Um want to take him on loan and uh, we say yes because uh, he's, he's a decent young player and he can get some first team experience so he's on his way and uh, also uh, Bruce, um, Bruce Dortmund said they would go ahead and uh, uh, accept an £8 million deal for Schmelzen. I was like 
Hmm, that's not that bad to be honest. We offer six million pound uh, plus Vandenberg. Was it six million pound plus Vandenberg, or maybe just six point? Okay, six point uh, two five million pounds. Because that's not a bad deal. Schmelzer is at least eighty rated, and I would like a new left back anyway. Because of course uh, we're playing Schultz there, and uh, yeah, he's okay. He's only seventy three overall, and uh, I'd like a, a good solid actual left back. You know, because Schultz is a left midfielder at the end of the day. But so we put in a new bid for Meyer as well at five million pounds, and wait and see what Schalke say. And uh, also uh, United said a deal for Fellaini was not enough. They want £7.5 million. I don't mind paying that, but I don't really know because, you know, I would like him, but I don't know. It, it's, it's quite a lot of money and, uh, you know, the centre mid area is not really our, our, our main concern. You know, the left back area is. But uh, anyway, uh, Wagner gives me the joke in the mornings by saying he wants to fill Ramos' spot and I was like, seriously, mate, you'd like to get on the bench. But uh, anyway, uh, following that, we had a game against Frankfurt here. So without... Um, without uh, Ramos for the first time. We did indeed switch to a 4-2-3-1. Just to experiment, I did say that a 4-2-3-1 is going to be my preferred choice of formation because uh, at the end of the day, like, um, I am a little bit worried that if Lasaga gets injured, we will be screwed, obviously. If Lasaga gets injured, we're screwed, but uh, I like the idea of having wingers that can sort of cut in, uh, not just go down and wing across it to Lasaga, but to also cut in and shoot as well. And also Sigurdsson playing just behind uh, Lasaga is definitely going to be his best position for him, so we could get even better out of Sigurdsson. You know, we've already got the best out of him already we could get even better but uh anyway no chance in the first half in this game against Frankfurt but in the second half we had a free kick I gave the ball to uh, Herman with uh, Sigurdsson then back to Herman he goes down the right hand side takes on Bamber Anderson and just gets body checked by the defender and the referee gives a straight penalty and I have no idea what he was complaining about because you <laughs> watch you on the replay if you didn't see it in uh, in the um in the, uh, the first uh, the first phase there. Look at that, he just floors the guy. He elbows him in the face. It was a penalty to us here in the 50th minute. It's Gilfi Sigerson who stands over the ball. Like I said, he's had a great start to this season. He's had an amazing start to his Herder Berlin career, really. He stands over the penalty and he beats Trapp as well to make it 1-0. So 50 minutes in, it's Gilfi Sigerson who scores from the spot and it's 1-0 to us. So great penalty by, well, not really a good penalty by Sigerson, but it goes in, that's all that matters, and it's 1-0 to us. And in the 55th minute, pretty much straight from that, uh, we win the ball here with Schultz. It goes down to Hosagai. Hosagai tries to play the ball through his man. Eventually comes back to him. The Japanese holding midfielder finds Herman. And Herman is just causing problems for the Frankfurt defence all the time on this game. They could not deal with the guy's pace. And as he goes down the right hand side, he wins another penalty. So in the 57th minute, in just seven minutes, Herman had won two penalties. His pace and his agility was too much for the Frankfurt defenders. And uh, last year, I know he did nothing, but we're certainly getting the best out of him already. That's a great piece of agility twice and uh, he gets another penalty for us. Sigerson's already scored one. Can he score another one? Was I going to put it to the opposite corner? Was I going to go to the same corner? Well I thought why mess with a winning formula? Go to the same corner. We do get the same result. It's uh, Frankfurt nil, Herder Berlin 2. Both goals by Sigerson, both from the spot. And we're 2-0 up here away from home. So, two penalties. Uh, Herman uh, got the assist for both. Sigerson got the goals. And, um, yeah, we're definitely going to get the best out of Sigerson playing in that attacking midfield slot. So, 2 new to us here. And uh, in the 61st minute here, you see Ginter get onto the ball and uh, find Werner. He gives it to Sigerson. He's already got uh, two goals. And as the ball comes to William Carvalho, he gives it to Sigerson. He runs down the left-hand side. He can't be caught. And he ends up drilling the ball into the bottom corner. So, in 11 minutes, Sigerson scores a hat-trick. So, what a game, Gilfie. Sigurdsson was having a hat trick in about 11 minutes. What a game! And uh, yeah, it's three goals for Gilfie Sigurdsson. So he was just playing out of his skin. It was so nice to see, you know, because uh, again, I, I say it every single episode, really, but for two million pounds, it is just mental how much we've got out of this guy. He, he feels like he's worth about 15 to 20 million. It's crazy. But uh, anyway, we decided to make a substitution here. Uh, Werner, Werner, who had made his debut, comes off for uh, Serge Gnabry. So Gnabry comes on, and uh, in the 65th minute, uh, Frank had a uh, throw in which uh, they give to Cadillac. Uh, the ball gets crossed into the box towards Rosenthal. We get the ball away. Eventually, Brooks plays the ball forward towards Le Saga, and we go on the break. He gives it to Serge Gnabry. He's literally just came off the bench, and he sprints through the middle. What a chance for Gnabry for his first chance of the game to make it 4-0. Unfortunately, we chip the ball over the goalkeeper, but it ends up hitting the post, and Anderson gets the ball away. So, still 3-0, but uh, playing so well, and the home side didn't really seem to have their number on us at all. And uh, in the 82nd minute, they had one of their first chances of the game, really. Flume takes this strike. 
strike. But uh, uh, Ter Stegen makes a great save, and he gets to his feet and makes another great save. And the ball gets, ends up going out for a goal kick. So it's another clean sheet for Ter Stegen. Four games in a row where he hasn't conceded. What a start he's having, and I'm so glad we ended up signing him because he is looking like an absolute beast of a goalkeeper. Hasn't conceded a single goal since coming in. So uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, please leave a like because that's much appreciated and it really does help my channel out and it only takes a second to click that like button and I'll see you for the next episode of my next gen career mode very soon.